assignment. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, please take your seat. Firstly, I'd like to appreciate every one of us for gathering for this special program and uh, for all your care, efforts, and show of love. May the Lord continue to bless you and increase everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'd like us to open our Bibles to the book of Judges. Judges chapter 5. For so many years because of one error or the other that the children of Israel usually get themselves into. The people were sold out from under God to the God they chose, which is God of the Median, and then the enemy ruled over Israel with a hard bondage, just like it was in Egypt. And uh, but one of those times, God had mercy on them, and He delivered them from the mighty hand of uh, Sisera. It was a great army captain that held them bound and would not let them go. For so many years they struggled under this rulership and it wasn't easy for them. But at the end of the day God looked towards their direction and gave them the victory. Just like we are here to celebrate the victory of the Lord in our midst, in our families, in our individual lives. And I read this text, which is verse 31, to form the basis of what God will do here today. So, let all thy enemy perish. O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest 40 years. Everyone who is representing the land here represent the land of this ministry, your personal family, your life, it is time for rest. When the enemy perish, then the glory will rise and shine and then there will be rest everywhere. So we should expect this rest as we are moving on, that we are stepping into the rest of God and the glory will shine brightly 
as the son, we are not going to be held under any bondage again. Held any under any restraint again. But our land shall experience rest from now. In the name of Jesus. To take us to the first shot of ministration this morning is my brother and my friend. He was here last evening, as last night, and uh, we promise he's coming this morning also. Spring House in Calabar. That's where Pastor Austin Bosso is from, and he will be ministering from now. Online, on ground. Let's rise up and welcome the man of God again to the pulpit. Let's celebrate Jesus one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people can have a friend from when they were six years old? And the friendship still remains. Um, It's amazing how God can do things. Connect children. I mean, absolutely. Imagine your six year old child having a friend, and that friend they grow up together. And you are sitting like grandma watching them. I I don't take this moment lightly. I don't take what God is doing here lightly and um, I want to celebrate my friend of so many years 1973 1973 uh, we were what they call a we did not know our left from our right but somehow there was a connect and it was divine. I celebrate Reverend and Reverend Mrs. Thank you for having me here. Hallelujah. And my wife says to greet. And she says that next time we're in Lagos together, we should not forget to be in Ibadan. <laughs> and so we are going to be here. We're going to be here in the shortest possible time again. This time we'll be sitting down new. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for the hospitality. Amen. I'm really, really grateful. I'm honored in Jesus' name. And church, for helping my friend and my brother. Thank you for all you do. This church wouldn't be where it is today without your support, without your help. If you want to clap, clap now. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated this morning. I sat here and the Lord said to change the message. To change the message. And 
This morning I titled this How to Rewrite Your Story. How to rewrite your story. We have entered the second half of the year. And God has given us a new slate. If you don't understand what God is doing, He's giving you a new slate. Some of you may not understand what a slate is. Ask us back in 1973. It's a piece of wood that we took to school before we started writing. We took that to school, we wrote our A, B, C on it. You don't understand. Today you have a lot of exercise books. We did have exercise books then. But to start school, you needed a slate. One of the first things that your parents will buy for you is a slate. And at the end of the week, you will clean that slate with charcoal. You grind some leaves together with the charcoal and you will clean the slate. Anybody who knows about slate, lift up your hands, let me see you. Oh, really? No, lift up your hand. Let me see your face. Oh. So we will clean the slates. God help you. If you don't carry the slate well, your uniform is dirty, it's turned all black. Because of the slate. But you see, the amazing thing about the slate is that the moment you clean it, you love what you write on it. And today, God is giving us a new slate, a blank slate, a fresh slate, and He's writing a new story. The other half of the year might have gone the way you did not like it. But this part of the year, you are writing something new. The Spirit of God is taking you higher. The power of God is under guarding you. You will do amazing things in the name of Jesus. I will start by reading the book of Isaiah chapter 43. From verse 18 down to 20. Remember ye not the former things, things that happened years before, things that happened this year that probably were not pleasant because God is interested in your life, God is interested in your destiny. God is interested in who you become. He says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Please, somebody shall behold. Say it again, behold. What does behold mean? Behold means see. Behold means look. Anything you see, anything you look at is because it's already there. He says, Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This is the best place to say the loudest amen. amen. This is the best place to say a louder amen. amen. He says, I will do a new thing. I can picture God beating his chest says i will when someone beats his chest it's because he's so sure of what he's about to do and what he can do the bible says that he's able to do exceeding abundantly and above all we ask or think it may look impossible 
but God makes things possible. I am a testimony to that fact. Great things happen to me and I don't know how it comes. And God is doing great things for you as well. God is supplying for your family. God is underguarding your family. He is causing favor to come to you from different quarters. This, this part of the year, hallelujah, this part of the year, God is giving you friends that please let's let's hear this god is giving you friends opening the doors of great friendship for you this part of the year in the name of jesus i didn't hear that amen i didn't hear that amen i didn't hear that amen shout that amen three times friends that will help you up divinely orchestrated friends friends that God himself puts together you will see them this year in the name of Jesus verse 20 says the beast of the field shall honor me the dragons and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Oh, hallelujah. Open to Joel chapter 2, verses 19 to 26. I will quickly read that. Joel chapter 2, verses 19 to 16. He says, yes, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Verse 20. But I will move far off from you the northern army, and I will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face towards the east sea and his hinder part towards the utmost sea and his thing shall come up and his ill servo shall come up because he had done great things. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Somebody tell your neighbor, fear not. If God wants to do something, what the first thing he will tell you is not to fear. Because fear is a trap. People of God, I'm here to tell you this morning that anything that causes you to fear is a trap. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound word, church, mind. And so he says, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. He says, be not afraid, you beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Verse 23, be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he had given you the former rain moderately and he caused to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. I'm telling you what God can do and what God is willing to do for you. Open doors happen very easily. We'll still go on. Verse 24. The floors shall be full of wheat. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. You know, yesterday, Reverend said that you are in a good time. I heard that clearly. That you are in a good time. And I'm telling you that as the days go by, your days get better. Amen. 25. I will restore to you the years. Somebody say restoration. restoration. Say that again, restoration. restoration. I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which are sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God 
who had dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. That is the word of the Lord for you and I. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us that the word of God, we said it yesterday, is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It says it's the designer of a thought and the intent of the heart. This is the word of the Lord for you. And I trust and I believe that this will find its expression in your life, in your family, in your children's children, generations to come in the name of Jesus. When it comes to rewriting a story, God is the master planner. God knows exactly what to do. God knows how to figure things out. Do you know that God has a million ways of solving one problem? And so you might have a problem and you are looking for the way. How can it be solved? Not this, people of God, that God has a million ways to solve that problem. And he's going to show you today in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to look at the life of Moses. Moses found himself in Egypt. He was a prince of Egypt. Moses was in a place where he had everything. But his heart was yielding, was yearning for ministry. He wanted to deliver his people. But you see, Moses killed a man, hid him in the sand. And the following day, Moses went to separate a fight between two Hebrews. And one of them said, oh, do you want to kill us like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? And of course, Moses knew that his time was up. Pharaoh had heard, obviously, for it to have gone round the whole nation. So Pharaoh must have heard. So he fled. And listen, folks, when he fled, he fled he fled to the backside of the desert. He was stripped of his power. Stripped of everything that he had. Do you know that sometimes some things are actually orchestrated by God so that you don't depend on the world? He was stripped of his power. He was stripped of his glory. And folks... All Moses could do as a prince of Egypt was to tend the flock of his father-in-law. That was what he was doing. Tending sheep. Walk all over the place, tending sheep. Then someday he went to the mount of God with the sheep. You know the story. There he saw a strange sight. And that strange sight was that the fire was burning, but the bush was not consumed. And what did he do? The Bible says that he turned aside to see. He turned aside to see. This was a great sight. Nobody had seen it before. I, in my 50-something years of existence, haven't seen it before. And Moses too hadn't seen it. And so he turned aside and he saw. And the Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 3 that the moment he turned aside to see, God spoke to him. That very moment. Why am I here this morning? Anytime a man gives God attention, he receives God's attention. Anytime a man yields himself to God, he sees the glory of God. Anytime a man decides to walk with God, he sees the power of God. That man does not remain the same. The glory of God is upon him because he has turned aside to see. The ministry that Moses had wanted to do back in Egypt came to him now on the platter of gold. 
And that's how come Moses got back into Egypt in power and in glory. Oh, hallelujah, church. Moses got back into Egypt with God on his side, with great things happening to him. Moses became the terror of Egypt. You don't understand. Anytime Moses would come, as the plagues were happening, the last plague just happened, as Moses is coming, and they see him in the horizon, everybody begins to get afraid. Because now the power of God was resident upon the man. And where did it start from? It started from the place of turning aside to see. Tell your neighbor, please turn aside to see. Give God your attention. Say that again. Give God your attention. Moses became the talk of the nation. Moses became the one that everybody will talk about. Why? Because he gave God his attention. Now how do you write your story? How can you rewrite your story? Number one, give God your attention. Total attention. The end of this year, give God your total attention. And number two, get to the end of you. Number one, give God your total attention. Number two, get to the end of you. Moses got to his end. His strength had failed. His skill as a prince of Egypt had failed. And now he's tending sheep. He got to the point where he couldn't do anything without God. And people of God, don't trust in your strength. Don't trust in your armor. Everything you do, do with the strength of God. He got to the point where he couldn't. He couldn't do anything else but empty himself. And this morning, I pray that everyone here listening to me, either watching or listening anyway, that you will get to the end of yourself. You will tell yourself that, look, I have gotten to my end. I trust God totally. Hallelujah. Jesus himself prayed, not my will. That's what Jesus said, not my will. Some people are carrying their wills about, moving from place to place, executing their wills. It is their will. They never said, God, can I do it your way? God, how do you want me to do it? God, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not against people going to Canada, but is that the will of God for your life? I'm not opposed to people traveling abroad, but is that the will of God for your life? People have left ministry in the name of going abroad. And ministry has shut down. Is that the will of God for your life? You will not miss God. I say that again, you will not miss God. David acknowledged that there was nothing he could do. He got to Ziklag and everything was burnt. Their wives and their children were taken. He acknowledged that he could not do anything. Jehoshaphat, the same thing. He had no might against this army that had come against him and his people. And what did he do? He set himself to pray. Please, people of God, get to the end of yourself. Hallelujah, church. If Moses had not stopped to see the fire, Moses would not have been where he was. God would have still raised a deliverer for the children of Israel, but it wouldn't have been Moses. Moses stopped and he saw the fire. And God could only speak when the fire came. Something new could only happen when Moses stopped to see. 
Please, can I say this? Anybody who stands at the fireplace is a person that will see the glory. It is in the fireplace that directions are given. Are you here, church? It is in the fireplace that great things are given to people. People see visions. People know where to go. It is in the fireplace. I'm reminded now of the apostles. Acts 2.42 There was a culture they had. And what was the culture? The Bible says they did not depart from the doctrine of the apostles, from fellowship and from prayer. That was what they had. And people of God, if you've been on the internet in recent times, you will hear things said like, we don't need to pray anymore. That we have prayed enough. And folks, we have not prayed enough. If somebody here, you've gone home. We have not prayed enough. We need to still begin to pray. We need to pray. We need to add intensity to our prayer. People will say, well, we don't need to pray for Nigeria anymore. We need to pray for Nigeria. We need to keep on praying for the nation. The apostles prayed. Are you here, church? The apostles prayed. Acts chapter 12. Who has Acts chapter 12? Acts chapter 12. The screens are not on. Who has Acts chapter 12? My internet is off. From verse 1. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to, to take, take Peter, Peter also. also. Then were the days, days of unleavened bread. Please hold on. He had killed James. Hello, church. He had killed James. Now everybody was happy that James was killed. So because that it pleased the people, he proceeded to take Peter as well. Remember, folks, that what the devil is doing, God can overturn. Are we here, church? Now, please read on. Now. After the, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter. To bring, bring him forth, forth to the people. people. Next verse. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made. Hey, please hold on. Peter was what? Kept in prison. What was the reason why Peter was kept in prison, people of God? To be killed. Hello, church. To be killed. For his destiny to be aborted. That's why Peter was kept in prison. But there is a conjunction there. Fortunately, I read an English-related course. There's a conjunction there. The conjunction tells you that what was happening before is about to be negated. Everybody say, but. Say that again. Say, but. Now, please read again. Go ahead. But prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. What was made? What was made? What was made? How was it made? Without ceasing. That means that it kept on and it kept on and it went on and it went on and it went on. Prayer was made without ceasing unto God uh, or by the church unto God for him. Please, next verse. And when Herod, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. prison go ahead please and behold the angel of the lord came upon him uh -huh. and a light shined in the prison uh -huh. and he smote peter on the side and raised him up saying arise up quickly 
and his chains fell off from his hands. Glory. Next verse. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Guard thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so, so he, he did. did. And he said Seven. unto him, Cast, Cast thy garment garments about thee and, and follow me. Next verse, please. And he went, went out, out and followed him and, and wished not that it was true, which was, was done by the angel, angel but third he saw a vision. Next verse, please. When they were past the first and the and second, second word, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And, and they went out and, and passed on through one street and fought with the angel departed, departed from him. him. Thank you. Sixteen soldiers were asked to keep him and two chains. And two soldiers, one soldier here, one soldier there, and they were in chains together. Those soldiers were also prisoners. But the Bible says that as this was going on, prayer also was going on. Can I tell you something? As you pray, God raises deliverance for you. As you begin to pray, God causes things to begin to happen for you. And I declare that this new quarter or this new half of the year, effectual doors will be open to you. Iron gates will break open in the name of Jesus. Chains are breaking from someone this morning. In the name of Jesus, what happened? Prayer was made. That was the strength of the early church. Never think that someone who prays is wasting his time. Never think that you as well, as you pray, that you are wasting your time. If we fast forward to Acts chapter 16, you know the story. It's that story that gives us Paul and Silas. They prayed. They sang. Now the reason why that came was because of ministry. A little girl was prophesying under the influence of the enemy. And Paul casted out the spirit. And the next thing that happened was they were sent to jail. Please, can, you, can I say this again, church? That the reason why Paul and Silas were praying in the prison was not because of deliverance. It was because it was their second nature. They were not praying so that they would be free. They were praying because it was their nature. The Bible tells us Acts 2.42 Prayer was part of the culture of the church. A church that is not willing to pray, a church that is not ready to pray, is a church without victory, is a church without strength, it's a church without power, it's a church without testimony. A people that are not willing to pray will not see testimonies. But you will because you're willing to pray. This is a praying church and I know that great things are happening here. In the name of Jesus. So Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises to God. The Bible says that the prisoners heard them. Now what am I saying? Until you visit the fireplace. Before then, you are not seeing anything. But at the fireplace is where we see victories. If you are here this morning... And you know that your prayer life has gone down. This is the time to revive it. Because new things are being written on your slate now. Some of you will get home and you will record, you would have recorded testimonies while you were here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you back up a little bit to Acts chapter 13 from verse 1. The Bible says that there were in that in the church certain prophets and teachers such as Barnabas, Lucius, uh, let, 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 I don't want to get the names wrong, such as Barnabas, si Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Siren and Manning which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. 
the Bible says the next verse as they ministered to the Lord and fasted as they ministered to the Lord and fasted not before they ministered to the Lord and fasted as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said the Holy Ghost said the Holy Ghost said do you know that the Holy Ghost is always talking the Holy Ghost is always speaking as we are here right now there is direction here do you understand that there's direction here someone that will download it will be someone who is sensitive to the Holy Ghost there's direction for your next level now it is here you are confused right now there's direction right now there's direction there's direction of course you know this illustration there are airwaves all over the place yesterday I was asking someone um, at BCOS that you people watch BCOS here is BCOS still the same way it used to be oh, um, uh, I know that is the same story everywhere in Aquibom, in Cross River the state stations are not watched but the truth is this once your antenna is up and you tune in what happens you catch it amen, amen. the same way there's direction here right now before Moses could step out God gave him a blueprint God gave him the direction but in what place did God give him the direction it was at the fireplace and that's how to write your story hallelujah church hallelujah. amen so you write your story in the fireplace the more you spend time in God as they minister to the Lord and I want this to sink in people of God this whole messy week will not be complete without us doing a U-turn and deciding to go forward in our prayer life as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have sent them somebody lift up your right hand somebody say God send me say that again so God send me say that again God send me I yield myself to you send me say that again I yield myself to you send me I yield myself to you send me hallelujah so you purge yourself of you empty yourself of everything that you have you constantly stay in the fireplace hallelujah church and number three is that number three build your confidence in what God's Word has said build your confidence in what God's word had said. Build it. Build it. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. I want all of us to read Colossians chapter 3, 16 together. Are we ready? One, two, let's go. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom in psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the lord now listen he says let the word of christ dwell in you how church richly what is richly in yoruba it's exactly thank you um, one of my favorite meals, if not my favorite meal, I'm sorry I'm talking about food now. I know some of you have not eaten, but it's okay, please. Um, one of my favorite meals, if not my favorite meal, sorry, is Amalane, for you. Now, the where I come from, you have to go to special places to get to be able to eat Amala. Designated places. All the cells there, okay, all you will find mostly will be 
afang soup, a dikai kong, a pang kukuo. So I came here and I and I and I told them if I anywhere anytime I'm here, my wife knows that I'm not eating any afa. And Reverend, yesterday, the chef at the hotel, when I told him, oh, I was from Calabar and all that, he said, ah, I will make a dikai come for you. I told him, no. No. If I'm here, morning till night, if I have to eat morning till night, which I don't do anyway, is Amala and a foriro. If there's no effort, at least give me a bula and I'll eat. Now, why am I saying that? I'm from a place where the soup is different. What makes a dikaikong different? What makes it different? What makes it different from the soup here? What makes it different is because inside one plate of soup, you will find one more. Inside one plate of soup, you find shaki. You find a jakika. You will find inside one. I mean, just name it. Inside one plate of soup. So it is more difficult to 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 eat. A plate of a dikaikon than it is to eat a wedu. You finish a wedu faster than you finish a dikaikon because you know you are periwinkle. You know periwinkle? Everything is inside one. Now, the Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you how? Richly. What is the periwinkle doing? Inside that soup is dwelling richly. The periwinkle, the pomo, the ejakika. What are they doing inside that soup? They are dwelling inside that soup richly. And the Bible says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you how? Richly. Let it dwell richly. In other words, let it stay there richly. Don't let it go anywhere. Keep looking. Keep looking at it. James chapter 1 and verse 25. Let's, let's put up James chapter 1 and verse 25. Thank you. James chapter 1 and verse 25. You know the word of God on your laps. That word will change your life forever. That word will revolutionize your thinking. It will change you for the rest of your life. If you permit it to look at this, but whoso look at into the perfect law of liberty and continueth in looking into the perfect law of liberty, he not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, he says, This man shall be blessed in his deed. Now, please, I like sometimes to read scriptures in the reverse. Whoso does not look into the perfect law of liberty and does not continue in looking into the perfect law of liberty, he will be a forgetful hearer and what will happen to him? He will not be blessed in his deed. But what takes us to the point where our stories are rewritten is the word of God that we keep looking at. And I charge you this morning, Keep looking at God's word. Keep the word of God as your focus. Are we here, church? Yes, Keep that word as your focus. Keep at it. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Joshua could do the things that he did because Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, he must have obeyed it. Joshua, the moment they were about to, to, to enter enter the land, the Bible says that the priests carried the ark and they were by the brink of Jordan. The moment their feet touched the brink of Jordan, the Jordan parted the same way he parted for Moses. And folks, 
The word of God should be our guiding light. The word of God should be where we run to. We'll keep it in our hearts. The Bible says to meditate on it day and night. I know sometimes, you know, when we talk to church folks, and I, I will always tell them that sometimes goats and ruminants have more sense than human beings. In the middle of the night, a goat that had eaten in the morning will come back and you see him chewing something. There's no more food in front of the goat, but the goat is chewing something. Do you know what, people of God? The goat is, let me say this, meditating as it were. Taking up the food that it had eaten before and taking it back and eating it again and again and again and again. The God of this work, of this commission, when you decide to take what is going on here, every word that Reverend puts out here for you, and you decide to take it back again, go back to your homes and meditate and meditate on it, that word will work for you. Amen. Several years ago, just somewhere in Lagos, I was, must have been around 86, 86. You know, we're coming back from church, um, had this set of children who used to go to church with me. And I never noticed that they used to write in, their, in the children's church. Until one day we were crossing the railway line at, um, at Fadei. As we were crossing the railway line, I saw, I saw a tiny notebook with this little child, this girl. And I asked her, there were scriptures on it. I asked her, what are you going to do with this, with what you have written in church today? She looked at me and like, is this man serious? And what did she say? She said, I'm going to meditate, of course. Today that little girl is a very big woman today. That little girl is doing exploits for the kingdom today. Hallelujah, church. So visit the fireplace and visit the word of the Lord. I speak to your life today that great glory will be seen on you. The power of God will be seen on you. You will go to places you never thought you could go to. Where you were disgraced before and where you did not see victory. I declare that in the name of Jesus, victory rolls in. Amen. Victory rolls in. Amen. The power of God rolls in. Amen. The spirit of God rolls in. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Someone today, God is giving you assistance. Amen. God is giving you assistance. Amen. I say that again. God is giving you assistance. Amen. God is putting people your way. Amen. The right people your way. Chains are breaking. Burdens are removed. Yokes are destroyed. You enter into places you never thought you could enter. In the name of Jesus. Your testimony will resound around the world. People will write books about your testimonies. People will make references about your testimonies. Men and women of renown. They will come looking for you. In the name of Jesus, I declare today that kings are dreaming dreams because of you. I declare today that you provide solution to the king's dreams in the name of Jesus. I declare that you find solution to every problem in the name of Jesus. I call forth rain on you. I call forth rain on you. It is the second half of the year. Rain. Rain. Rain, 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 rain. I say it again, 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 rain. Oh, one more time, I say it again, rain. The Bible says the spirit, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of us and it quickens our mortal bodies. I declare that in the name of Jesus, your mortal body is, is rekindled. There are things you did not know before you begin to know them now. 
Oh, can you, can you just pray about it now? Pray about that. Cement that in prayer. Let's do that now. Our Father, Mokirano, Shilegrano, Celebrano, Zeliga, Rabodeza. Oh, Jesus, Nekuka, Kokedosha, Teza. The second half of the year. Ludemo, Silemonte, Ya. Iko, Fulamo, Remado, Shilemonda, Yile, Boboza, Leta, Yela. Oh, Remado, Bos, Ile, Broga, Teso, Libo, Ramado, Boboza. Doors opening. Unusual doors of victory opening. In the name of Jesus, Suremoda, Ole Geranosa, no more disgrace, no more disgrace, no more disgrace. In the name of Jesus, we are a people of victory. Marco Boja, the Bible says, Now thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world borimado shetazina lok rekotuza levo rabadopo popo bonze lebradoza in the name of jesus take two steps away from where you are two steps away from where you are this is prophetic take two steps away from where you are hallelujah as you have taken those steps in the natural in the spiritual you are taking giant leaps you're making giant progress you're making giant progress you're making giant progress take two more steps away from where you are as you take these steps in the name of jesus you go upward and forward 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 Take two more steps. Two more steps. As you take these steps, your generations are blessed forever. Your ministry is blessed forever. The work of your hands are blessed forever. In the name of Jesus. One more time. Two more steps. As you take these steps, may you receive of the dew of heaven. Receive the fatness of the earth. Plenty of corn and wine. You will never lack. You will never lack. You will never lack. Roka bobo bora badabosha. Lebruna kota sule branaza. Libro no se liga roba daboza. Oh, the righteous cannot be forsaken. You will not be forsaken. You will not be forsaken. You will not be forsaken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout three amens. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Lift up both hands. Livro no selebon gadesh lebren gado selivra duza. You will not know shame. You will not know pain. Where it is difficult for others, it is easy for you. You are in this commission. The God of this commission. The God of this work is working for you. He's working in your life. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Praise of Hallelujah. Father in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Great things are said of us in the name of Jesus. Listen, folks, the Bible says that you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. It says the trees of the field will clap their hands. Because of you, nations are blessed. Because of you, victories come to people. Your family members, extended family members, are blessed because of you. In the name of Jesus, Jacob entered Laban's house. Laban's house was turned around. It was because of the blessing. Hallelujah. As you lift up your hands, the blessing is on you. The blessing is on you. In the name of Jesus, this is a different you. 
a very different you a totally different you you are lifting up your hands to Jesus you are lifting up your hands to the God of glory he will not shame you 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 in Jesus name turn to two people tell them I am victorious Now say that to yourself as you go back to your seat. I'm victorious. I'm victorious. I'm victorious. I believe that a good work has been done in your life this morning. Get back home. Visit the fireplace more. Visit the fireplace more. If I don't visit, stay in the fireplace. Are we here, church? Stay in the fireplace. Just stay there. Just stay there. Be on fire. When you have, you have set yourself on fire, the other people around you will be on fire. That is how to help your family. Stay on fire. You, stay on fire. In some places, it's the women that go to church to stay on fire for the men. That is a reverse. The men should be on fire. The same way the women are on fire. In fact, the men should be more on fire than the women. Someone told me that, well, I don't, I don't go to church. You know, I release my wife to go. That is a reverse of the process. You go to church, you lead your family like Abraham. When everybody at home are on fire, things happen very easily. Things happen very easily. And you will record great testimonies in this assembly. You will see good things happening. It will be layer upon layer. As your, before you finish one layer, another layer of victory has come. Before you finish spending one, another one has come. Before you finish sharing this testimony, another testimony has come. Before you finish executing this other job, another job has come. Businesses are coming unusually. I declare to owners of shipping lines here. Owners of airlines are here. You did not hear that. Owners of airlines are here. For the sake of the gospel, owners of airlines are here. I say that again. Owners of airlines are here. Some people did not hear that. Owners of airlines are here. In this church, in this church captains of industries captains of industries captains of industries in the name of Jesus it is the human mind that puts limitations with God, nothing shall be impossible. You will find out that without stress, you will begin to take steps that will lead you to where you are supposed to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.